Praise the Lord, everyone. It's me, Apostle Tui. Um, I believe uh, we're going to go for a study. I believe it's really important for us to know. And the study is the two covenants and its purpose and how it transitions to the new covenant. So the first covenant I want to talk about is the Abrahamic covenant representing the promise. The Mosaic covenant representing the law. So what is the law? Moses received the Torah, traditionally translated the law, meaning instructions. The first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy are collectively referred to as the Torah by Jews, the law. So there's throughout these five books, that is the law. So altogether there are 613 commandments in the law. When the commandment started, the law, Exodus chapter 34, verse 28, and he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did never eat bread or drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. So this is when God used Moses to free the Israelites from Egypt, and then he went up the mountain, Mount Sinai, and got the commandments, and he gave it to, gave it to Israel. And from there, the commandments go throughout the five books. And like I said before, there's 613 commandments. And I believe this is just God's standard. The law is holy and the perfect instruction of the way of life. Psalm 19, verse 7 to 8. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23. The commandment is a lamp and the law is light. Every proof of instruction of the way of life. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Therefore the law is holy and the commandments holy and just and good. Say so, amen. Like I said before, um, the law is perfect. It's a light and it's the way of life. So there's nothing wrong with the law. I believe this is God's standard. What was the purpose of the law? Galatians 3.19 Therefore then serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions to the seed shall come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by an angel in the hand of a mediator. You see that? It was added because of transgressions. A transgression is something that is against a command or law. A transgression can be a failure to do your duty. A sin is a transgression against God. Romans 5.20 Moreover, the law entered that the offence might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Entered that offences might abound, meaning our sin to increase. 1 Corinthians chapter 15.56 The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. The strength of sin is the law. Why? That sin can be revealed in us through the law. Amen. So the purpose of the law was to show us that we have sin. So if we have sin, then we have transgressions against God. Uh, the law is only there just to show us that there's a problem, we have a sin problem. The law was only brought in to expose our sin because the law is holy and we are not. Romans chapter 7, verse 10 to 14. The commandment, which was for life, this I found to be for death. For sin, for the occasion for the commandment, deceived me and free it killed me. Therefore the law indeed is holy, and the commandment's holy, and righteous, and good. Did that which is good then become death to me? May it never be, but sin, that it might be shown to be sin, by working death, to me through that which is good 
the fruit of the commandment sin might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am flesh and soul under sin. Amen. So you see, you see Apostle Paul just telling us that the purpose of the law is just it just found death in us because the law was meant, was meant to show us the way of life but we ended up finding out is because it found death in us because we are sinners and that's the whole purpose of the law was to expose us to show us that we have sin and to show us that the law is perfect and, sh- and the law was there to show us that we are not perfect the law cannot justify us why because that wasn't its purpose Romans 3, 19-20 Now we know that what things soever the law saith it says to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin Amen You see that? It's, um, it says that the, uh, that all the world may become guilty before God. We are all sinners. Galatians 5 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. Romans 3 23. For all have sinned and come short. Of the glory of God. Amen. We all sinned. Galatians 2.16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. But by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. That we might be justified by the faith of Christ. And not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Amen. No, the law wasn't meant to justify us. Amen. That's you see here. So we clearly see that the law cannot justify us because it's not its purpose. Being justified by the law will bring a curse. Galatians three ten, for many are as are of the works of the law are under a curse, for it is written. Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. Cross reference Deuteronomy chapter 27 26. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of of this law to do them, and all the people shall say, Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass if you will not listen to the voice of the Lord your God to observe. To do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. James chapter 2, verse 10 For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offends in one point, he is guilty of all. Amen. So, if I'm telling you, oh, oh, well, I keep the Sabbath day, or I keep this, I keep that. Well, guess what? If you break, even though you keep the Sabbath day, but if you break something else, there's no point. You still break the Sabbath day because if you break one, you break all. So it's pretty clear. If we choose to keep the law, we also have to suffer the consequences of the law. Amen. So when people say they keep the law, it is impossible. Reason because we all have sin and everyone understands that no one's perfect. That was the only purpose of the law to show that we have sin. The law was to show that we are guilty and we cannot be self righteous. Law is perfect and we are not. This is why Abraham's promise is so important to us. Abraham wasn't justified by the law he was justified by faith let's have a look 
Romans chapter 4, verse 2 to 5. For if Abraham was declared righteous by the works of the law, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his pay is not credited due to grace, but due to obligation. But to the one who does not work, but believes in the one who declares the ungodly righteous, his faith is credited, credited as righteousness. Amen. So it's clear that Abraham wasn't justified by, from the law, but by faith. Galatians 3, verse 6 to 8. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, so then understand that those who believe are the sons of Abraham. And the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, proclaim the gospel to Abraham ahead of time, saying, All the nations will be blessed in you. Amen. So whosoever is, he believes is Abraham's children. So let's let's have a look at the promise. So we're up to the promise now, family. So the promise to Abraham. Genesis 22, verse 15 to 18. And the angels of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because you have done this thing, and has not withheld your son, my only son, but in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and my seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in this seed you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Amen. So after, so this is um, when God told Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, and God challenged Abraham to see if Abraham loved God. So God challenged him and Abraham passed and this is when God makes the promise so this is when God sworn by himself and he said in your seed all the nations of the earth will be blessed amazing eh because Abraham just listened to God so what was the promise to Abraham Galatians 3.16 now to Abraham and his seed for the promise made he saith not, and not to seeds as of many, but as of one, and my seed, which is Christ. Let's look at other translations, if you still don't understand. Galatians 3.16 Now the promise was spoken to Abraham and to his descendant. Scripture does not say to his descendants, referring to many, but and to your descendant, referring to one, who is Christ. Amen. So, a lot of people thought the law was the promise became because it came four hundred and thirty years after the law, but they were wrong because Jesus came and He was the promise. The law and He came to church to show that we have sin, transgressions against God. So this is the confusion what people have. The promise never came through the law. But through Jesus. Galatians 3, verse 11 to 14. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Wow, see that? It is evident, for the just shall live by faith, and the law is not of faith. But the man that does them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. You see that? Um, that oh, the just shall live by faith, and the law is not of faith. Galatians 3.29 And if ye be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and the heirs according to the promise. Amen. Galatians 3, verse 17 to 18. Now I say this, the law 
which came 430 years later, does not annul the covenant previously ratified by God, so as to cancel the promise. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no more of, of promise, but God has granted it to Abraham by promise. Amen. Just because the law came 430 years after the promise, it doesn't mean it cancelled out the promise. Because that wasn't its purpose to cancel out. It was there to just to do its job to show that we have a problem. John 1.17 for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Through faith in Jesus, we have made righteous the same way as Abraham, and not through the law. Romans 4, 16 and 25. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace, to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him who he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and called those which be not through, though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that they might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken. So she see this be seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, never yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not on the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and be, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able was it was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sakes alone. It was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it should be imputed. If we believe on him that was raised up, Jesus our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Amen. Let's have a look at the next page. Let's continue the scripture. So here's the cross reference. So this verse Paul talks about Abraham not <coughs> falling into unbelief, but was strong in faith and trusting God's promise and knowing that God was gonna do it. So the key verse, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he promised he was able to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. So this is the story that um, Apostle Paul was, was talking about. Genesis 15, 1-6 After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your seemingly great reward. Abraham said, Lord, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and he will inherit my estate in Eleazar in Damascus? Abraham said, Look, Look to me, you have given no offspring, and look, one one born in my house is my heir. Look, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This man will not be your heir, but he who will come forth out of your own body will be your heir. The Lord brought him outside and said, Look now forward to the sky, and count the stars. If you are able to count them, he said, um, he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed God and was credited to him as righteousness. Amen. So this is why Abraham, um, his faith was was um, a kind of righteousness because he just believed God. God said, "I shall do this," and Abraham believed, and then his bed was his faith was enough. You know, it wasn't him keeping the law, it wasn't him doing anything like that. It was just him believing God. So right here, so just as Abraham believed God, we believe in Jesus the same way that he died for our sins and was resurrected for our justification. Make sense? Now our faith is credited for righteousness in believing in Jesus. This is why we are the same as Abraham. 
we don't keep the law, we just believe in Christ, what he did for us, and all we do is just believe, and our faith is accounted for righteousness. Amazing? Man. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The law is not for a righteous person. Jesus has made us righteous. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 to 12. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but the lawless, the disobedient, the ungodly, and for sinners, for the unholy, profane, the murderers, the fathers, and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, perjured person, and there be any of any other thing it should contrary the sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me, and that he can be faithful, putting me into the ministry. Amen. We have we have been made righteous by faith. Amen. So we understand this is why the law the law did. The purpose of the law was to come to expose us, to push us to Jesus. So the um, the law is for sinners, which were before, which we were before, but thanks be God who has chosen us and put us into the ministry and that we are no longer transgressors to the law, but blameless. Amen. Jesus fulfills Abraham's promise, now he fulfills the law. Matthew 5, 17 to 18. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or part of the letter will disappear from the law until all things are fulfilled or accomplished. Jesus did not come to destroy what is perfect, the law. Nothing will change from the law until heaven and earth will pass away. The law will remain. He came, he came to fulfill the law, meaning he came to complete it. How? Bringing in another covenant, which doesn't change anything in the law. That's why it's called a new covenant. So the law will remain. Why? So oh, sorry. So the law will remain. Why? To do its job to expose everyone's sin to come to Christ until the end of the world, until all things in the Bible be fulfilled. Amen. So the purpose of the law. It's just to push us to Jesus. That's the only purpose. is to show us that we have sinned and to push us to our Saviour. So Jesus did not come to destroy the law because people think that Jesus came to destroy the law. No, he came to complete it because we cannot, we cannot, we can't do it. We can't keep the law. So Romans 3.31 Do we then not, um, Notify the law through faith? Absolutely not. Instead, we uphold the law. So uh, the reason why I use this scripture because many people say, well, are we saying we're destroying the law through faith? We're not saying that. The law, (laughs) people use the scriptures for us to keep the law, but they're not understanding. So, uh, So as I say here, many people will use this verse to keep us, for us to keep the law. And this is why I'm explaining the purpose of the law was it was added because of our transgression. And yes, we uphold the law because of its purpose to push us to Christ. So I use scripture, Galatians 3.24, Therefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Amen? So when people use this scripture, we, we do uphold the law. We're not against the law. The law is perfect. The law is holy. The law is the way of life. The law is only there to show us that we cannot keep it. It's there to push us to Christ Jesus. Amen. The new covenant. So this is the prophecy of the new covenant in Jeremiah. This is the first time, um, this is the only time in the Old Testament that the word new covenant is mentioned. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. Look, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that took them by the hand, bringing them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, and I disregarded them, saith the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of 
Israel after those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and I'll write that in their hearts and I'll be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man their neighbor and every man his neighbor saying, know the Lord for they shall know me and from the least to the greatest for I will forgive the iniquity and the sins I remember no more. Amen. We're under a better covenant with better promises. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 to 8. But now have, have he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is a mediator of better, a better covenant which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for a second. For finding fault with them, he, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Amen. So this is the prophecy, Jeremiah. And this is the first covenant was the law. Finding fault in us, we needed justification. Amen. So the new covenant is grace. Jesus had to die for our sins so we can be redeemed through his blood. His blood was a sign of the new covenant. Amen. Matthew 26, 26-28 As they were eating, Jesus break, took bread, gave thanks to it, and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took a cup and gave thanks and gave to them, saying, All of you drink it, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for many, for many remissions of sin. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14 to 15. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? For this reason he is the mediator of a new covenant. Since death had occurred for the redemption of transgressions that were under the first covenant, that those who have been called may receive the promise of the everlasting inheritance. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was pierced for our transgression and he was crushed for our iniquity. The punishment that brought our peace was in him, on him, sorry. And by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. So Jesus had to take the curse off us. He had to die for us. Because we are guilty before God. So this is why God had to die. Because he had to bring justification and redemption for us. And this is why we are lucky. We are so blessed that God came down and, and, and brought us grace. Because we were, if we were under the law, if we had to keep the law, we are all going to fail. And honestly, we are all going to hell. But because of the promise and the seed, Jesus, he came and he laid down his life. And the promise and the promise was this that all the nations of the earth will be blessed through this promise and that is jesus and through his blood he's given us eternal life for we are now dead in christ Romans 7 4 therefore my brothers you also were made dead to the law through the body of christ that you will join to another to him who was raised from the dead that we bring forth fruit to God. Amen. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Romans 6 11, In the same way, consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Colossians 3 3, For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Galatians 2 20, I have been crucified with Christ and is no longer. I that live, but Christ living in me, that life which I live, live now in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So talking about being born again, us being dead in baptism with Christ and being raised with him in resurrection. So St. Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, the old thing has passed away and all things 
and become new. Amen. So, um, sorry. Look, new things. Have, um, new things have become. New things has come. I feel so used to seeing the, um, saying the King James version, but we praise God for we are we have been dead with Christ in baptism. So, if you want to read um, Romans chapter six, from one to ten, we we'll explain to you we've been buried with Christ in baptism, and we've been raised with Christ um, in the newness of life. Jesus nailed everything on the cross, including the law that exposed our sin. Colossians 2, verse 12 to 16. Buried with him in baptism, as I said earlier, wherein also you have risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. We have raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your sins, and our circumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting and all of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to the cross and having spoiled principalities and powers he had made a show a show of them openly triumph over them in it let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of holy days or a new moon or, or of a sabbath day Sorry, do you see that? So Jesus has nailed everything on the cross, all our sins. Even the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, that was the law. He also put that on the cross because we had died. So he says, let no one judge you on meat, drinks, holy days, new moons or Sabbath days. So this is why I'm just trying to share with everyone when people are trying to tell us to keep the law, trying to tell us to keep the Sabbath day. We're like, I'm sorry, we're not under that anymore. We're under Jesus. Through the Spirit, we are not under the law. Galatians 5, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Wow. Romans 8.14 For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Amen, family. So when you see this, when we are led by the Spirit of God, not led by the law, the, the Spirit of God will just teach us righteousness. So again, being born again, we receive the Holy Spirit who will guide us in all truth. And we are led by the Spirit and not by the law. So please understand, Galatians 2.21 I do not make void the grace of God for if righteousness is through the law then Christ has died for nothing. Why? Because if we're trying to keep the law then Jesus died for no reason. Why? Because you're trying to justify yourself. You're trying to be self-righteous. Amen? Keeping the whole law but God's righteousness is it's just it's a gift. So Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves it is a gift of God not of works that no one will boast. Amen. So if you're keeping the law you're self-righteous you're like God I've done it myself I, I can enter heaven because I keep the Sabbath day I keep this I keep that. Well God says no. No one is self-righteous. We need to be saved through Jesus. Because why? Because it's a gift. Salvation is a gift. This is why Jesus laid down his life for us. And I'm so thankful because I know uh, I know we have a sin problem. And I thank God that he you know he sent his son and then we were able to be saved for him. Hopefully you guys understand the study today, the purpose of the promise and the purpose of the law. So what was the purpose of the promise? to bring salvation to the world amen so the promise was jesus so what was the purpose of the law to expose our sin and to push us to christ so galatians 3 24 therefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to christ jesus that we might be justified by faith amen so it's meant to bring us to christ that that was the whole purpose of the law to show us that we have sin and the purpose of the promise to bring us salvation and through salvation, 
we have eternal life with Jesus. How, how amazing is that, eh? And this is why I want to share the study to give people understanding. We need to keep the law. We need to keep the law. You have to keep this to keep that. No, we just keep Jesus. Jesus gave us two commandments: is to love our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbors as we love ourselves. It says through that, hang the law.